And the first of them I wanna to introduce to you right now is Arthur Vesluis. Uh, I've told Arthur in private correspondence that I consider him not only a compliment to our previous speaker, Jeffrey Kripal, but both of them as two of the most, two of the men I'd most like to see emerge as public intellectuals in our time. He's made a unique contribution in the academy and beyond to restoring to our own appreciation the great currents that underpin our own civilization. And his many books on Western esotericism, on the Neoplatonist tradition that runs throughout all the entirety of Western culture, the appearance of this transcendentalism in American culture, as well as Eastern religions and Native American culture has created a body of work uh, that is extremely lucid and accessible to ordinary people, but actually very much purpose towards the same purpose that great writers like Plato, Confucius and others, writers, thinkers uh, had in their day about infusing our politics with, in Arthur's own title of his book, a mystical gnosis. Subtitled Politics, Gnosis and Emerging Cultures. It's actually an extraordinary uh, new book that looks to look for practical ways and also historical examples in which this higher under, intuitive understanding of East and West and as everyone will bring of modern science can actually infuse our culture. He's a professor uh, of, of religion and also uh, been in the uh, departments of um, literature at Michigan State University where Fred uh, studied when he was in America. Uh, and he's been around a long time and he's also taken a very active role in writing about r radical movements and about politics in our time. So. Arthur, I'm delighted you joined us. Thank you so much for coming today. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I'm really impressed with the uh, with this event and the way you've all set it up. It's quite remarkable. So, tell us, what are we going to do to create the mystical state? Well, the mystical state, uh, of course, the title is a pun, uh, and uh, it, it has a double meaning because. At the center of the mystical state, uh, that is Pallas, is um, transform it, the transformation of individual and community through spiritual practice. And so that's something that in the West has not exactly been in the foreground all the way through uh, Western European history. Uh, but there has been a continuous current of mysticism. And so some of my work focuses on uh, inner practice and different pra transformative practices. But another current of my work is critical of what you could call Leviathan state. And so there's a political dimension to my work as well. And those, those two things inter interconnect. You've identified uh, a strong strand in Western culture, as well as in the academy, of a kind of an aggressive exotericism that does not actually understand and appreciate what's act, what has been communicated to us by the very figures whose names we chisel into the top of our colleges and universities, those buildings, but somehow goes on to ignore what they said and presented to us. What is going on in this struggle right now that you see, for in, especially in the West, as you see so many people struggling to uh, reacquire our spiritual inheritance, but seemingly up against a, a, a strong resistance from it, not only within the established religions, but even within the academy itself. Well, there's a long, there is a long history of the um, suppression of esoteric currents uh, in the West. And that, that goes back to uh, the early Christian period. And so for many people, uh, the very idea that there's a continuous tradition of uh, movement toward transcendence in the West is unfamiliar. And that uh, ties with something else, which is a political current in the West that's also somewhat uh, unfamiliar now for many, many people. And that's the current of decentralization or federalism. And uh, uh, those two things are actually, in my view, connected, uh, but we can talk about that if you like. I would. Please go on. The decentralization uh, 
Uh, what I'm referring to here is the tension between, on the one side, um, what I would call the Levi following Hobbes, the Leviathan state, uh, the tendency toward more and more centralization, uh, cent centralized power as the solution to everything. Uh, and that tendency is tied uh, to what I'm calling also, uh, you had mentioned exoterism or uh, I sometimes refer to it as externalism, meaning a way of seeing the world that's fundamentally materialistic. Uh, and that those two things tie together. Uh, in other words, uh, a Leviathan state tends to be very materialistic. It's focused on changes only in the physical world. And it, it, it often uh, historically and up to the present time is actually directly, as in the case of China, directly opposed to uh, and persecuting of sp different spiritual groups and movements. And so uh, that also sometimes can be the case in other, you know, in other historical uh, examples uh, that, that I could point to. But primarily what I would say is on the one side you have, uh, uh, individual freedom and decentralization. On the other, you have uh, centralization. And those two things are fun in ultimately fundamentally opposed. And I realize that many people are looking to a centralized solution for many things uh, today, including including some, you know, some of the speakers undoubtedly in this group and uh, participants. But my argument in my argument in the mystical state is that ultimately a healthy state, a healthy polis has to be, uh, has to reflect a cultural connection to the place where it is, the, to the land around it. And that is fundamentally a local phenomenon, not a grand imposed phenomenon from outside. So that that in a nutshell is what I would say. So you have written about this matter of gnosis or higher spiritual intuition. Uh, and you write in your book, Mystical State, the purpose of a living culture is to encourage noesis in those who are so inclined. Noesis is a conduit through which new cultures are born. It is the conduit to what transcends the sensible world and ultimately to what transcends all form, shape, or differentiation. Now, you know, as a scholar, that people like Plato in writing the Republic had no great confidence that the general public was going to be joining in to that enterprise. In fact, he, he, Socrates stated over and over again, and Plato reflected in his writings, that the majority of people are not interested in the demands of higher human growth, spiritual awakening, and so on. Uh, and so Plato's own recommendation was that there be a renunciate group of young boys and girls set aside from birth who would be the leaders and rulers of a state. And that the forms of democracy, oligarchy, monarchy, and so on would always be uh, a problematic if you, unless you had this higher vision. In Eastern cultures, uh, in Asian cultures, you have often had this meeting of uh, political leaders, heads, kings of states, and great spiritual adepts. And in most of the encounters you would see, at least anciently described, offer great deference to the spiritual knowers uh, because they would want to be guided by them. Uh, yet in our own, in, certainly in Western history, we have great examples of political leaders seizing the crown, you could say, from the hands of the Pope or the priests and saying, I will anoint myself as the leader of this time. I don't really need your vision. So now that the people in a democratic society have have the decision-making power, how do we move to in inspire the people as a whole to want to engage that higher process of human growth so that they're qualified to lead and to infuse politics with this parapolitical vision of this higher gnosis, as you describe, or transcendence? What, what's the route to get there? Well, I think there are two different ways to think about that. My own, my own background is not only in uh, mysticism and Western traditions, but also in Tibetan Buddhism. And uh, so I have a fair bit of uh, experience over the years with Tibetan Buddhists. 
uh, practice. And uh, those things, in my view, and maybe our subsequent speak speakers or participants in this group will have something to say about this, there, th Tibetan Buddhism, particularly in the Nyingma tradition, which is what I'm most familiar with, though I have connections to all of them, is focused on a transformative path. So there's a teacher and a student, and there's a continuous map. There's a map to, uh, you could say, transcendence. And that has never existed in exactly the same way in the West. In other words, you don't have, and I talk about this as, uh, in one book as uh, a historical continuity, meaning that you do have esoteric figures and you do have spiritual figures in the West, but you don't have a consistent esoteric training system or means of practice, tr con conveying practice uh, advice in the same way. It doesn't exist. Um, and so that's the critical thing, in my view. In terms of emerging culture, you need a means for also cultural continuity and for self-transformation and transformation, continuous transformation in a positive way of the community. How do you get that? It's ultimately not through leaders. It's not through politics the way we think about it. It's through practice. So you need that kind of community, whether you call it monastic or whether it's lay yogis or however you want to think of it. Uh, because again, in, in my view, decentralization is critical. Uh, in other words, having a local a community center where peop some people are devoted to spiritual practice is very different than an imposed system from the outside. So my whole view is actually, my, my whole perspective uh, in mystical state, in Platonic mysticism, and in various other books, is actually very different than the way most people think about either politics or religion. And I'm aware of that. That's kind of my calling to bring some of these things um, to light. I, I would note that you come from a longstanding agricultural family in Michigan and have a very strong connection to uh, a visceral connection to the earth as well as to. Uh, uh, the, the indigenous traditions earth, earth related around the world, which you've written about. Um, and by the way, I should point out before I let you go on, go on that um, your most recent book, Conversations in Apocalyptic Times, A Guide for the Spiritual Seeker, has recently been published. 